Billy, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. We're so happy to be here. I love the with daily you. signal, so thank you. Good. Well, talk to us about the 2024 field. You saw this town hall yeah, yesterday, right? I did with Tucker. Yeah. What were your thoughts? Well, um, I thought Vivek was the best performing candidate. Really? I thought Pence was very underwhelming. Okay. Um, I just think his stance on Ukraine is so out of touch with where the voters are. And I'm, I'm right with Tucker on the Ukraine thing. I think it's insane that we would send a dollar to the conflict in Ukraine. Um, and yeah, look, we have we have our own kind of venue here and we have President Donald Trump, who I believe is going to be the nominee yeah. coming. And uh, we have six presidential candidates. And so uh, we'll kind of see what happens. Yeah, there's some kind of underreported presidential candidates that are here, yep. too, right? Ryan Binkley, Perry Johnson. Uh -huh. So uh, Mayor Suarez, Asa Hutchinson, uh -huh. Vivek, and then, of course, Trump. So look, uh, Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Tim Scott. Ron DeSantis, uh, I guess they had other plans. They're missing out, though. Oh, were they all invited? Of course. Every yeah. candidate was invited. Bobby Kennedy was invited. Yeah. Uh, wow. So, yeah, we have 6,000 people here. But uh, apparently Ron DeSantis has something better to do than speak to 6,000 people in his home state. Uh, so how did you think he did yesterday? Average. Yeah. Now, Vivek, why do you think he did so well? Well, he had the clearest answers. Uh, and also, I think he was most in line with where Republican voters are. I think he reads the room really, really well. Interesting. And so um, I'm a big Vivek fan. And also, to his credit, he comes and speaks at our events, which, uh, yeah. which means a lot to me. Well, so. OK, you're a big Trump fan. I am. Would you want Vivek as Not a? Not necessarily. I think he'd be a great chief of staff. Oh, OK. I think because he's, okay. he's a master tactician, really understands the details. He's built a phenomenal business. So, But I, I am enthusiastically uh, behind the idea of Vivek being on, on the team to save America. What about a VP? Who stands out to you the most uh, right I like now? Ron Johnson a lot because oh. I think we have to win the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, Ron Johnson is amazing. He was awesome on the vaccine issue, which for me is like a top issue. Yeah. And uh, he's been really, really good, humble, won three times in the state of Wisconsin in 2010, 2016, and yeah. 2022. And I, I've always gotten along with Johnson. He's, he's terrific. I think Trump Johnson would be a great ticket. Interesting. Trump Johnson. All right. Or the guy talking right now, Byron Donalds, would be great, too. Okay. So what are you, what's the vibe you're getting from all these young people that come to these conferences? Who do you think they are supporting? Who do you think they're interested Trump. in? Trump. But, like, Trump's going to win the straw poll probably pretty convincingly here. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, like, these other candidates, they don't work. Like, they don't show up to our stuff. Like, if you want to win younger voters, then, like, come talk to them. Interesting. Okay. What about, we were just hearing you talk on stage about all these different uh, efforts you guys are putting yep. together to help uh, bring voters out in the 2024 election and to prevent any kind of voter manipulation yep. or election fraud. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, we're, we have a new effort called Chase the Vote. Uh, I think it's time for Republicans to embrace early voting and to embrace the kind of grassroots activity necessary to win. Uh, so we're trying to build a ballot chasing army in Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia. Uh, so we're investing heavily in it. And uh, d Democrats have had 30 days of early voting of that kind of effort. And Republicans traditionally don't do almost any of that. And so we're trying to even the playing field. I, th I think it can be the decisive marginal reason we win in 2024. Wow. Now, what about Tucker Carlson? I know Love you were saying he did such a good job yes. moderating yesterday. I've heard some people speculating that he might throw his hat in the ring. I don't know. He said he's starting a new media venture. He'd be super successful. He's the only guy that might be able to challenge Trump. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, all these other guys are kind of a joke. Like, <laughs> Tucker could actually do it. Wow. But I don't think he would. Because yeah. he understands the base. He's incredibly articulate. He's so charismatic. And um, these other candidates have really been unimpressive. Now, I've seen you tweeting a lot and speaking a lot yes. about this woke ideology that's infesting everything from Snow White to the military. <laughs> yes. What do you think is the most egregious example you've seen lately of oh, wow. this ideology? That's a really important and good question. Uh, yeah, the one that comes to mind is the chest feeding from the CDC that is literal child abuse and will hurt babies' hearts. All the pander to trans ideology and the feelings of neurotic freaks of men who call themselves women people who should be in mental hospitals that think that they should be able to take a lactating hormone, which will then potentially give a baby an irregular heartbeat. It's a true fact, and the CDC embraces it. That's your center for disease control. And so it's not about the protection of innocent, the protection of kids, it's about pandering to neurotic freaks. So if Republicans are in the next administration, yeah. what kind of repercussions should people in the CDC have or other agencies that are pushing lies yeah. like this? Schedule F and fire them all. Like, Schedule F gives you the ability to, you know, in the Heritage Foundation, you guys are doing amazing work with personnel. I mean, I think we need to fire every single employee of the CDC 
that was involved in Fauci's vaccine rollout that is, I mean, this chest feeding thing is so egregious because it shows that health is not the actual mission statement. And that's what woke ideology does, right? Woke ideology corrodes the central promise of what our organization might exist, that it might be rooted in objective pursuits, right? So if you have a science industry or a, you know, or a science effort or a math effort, math and science don't matter as much as the narrative or the revolution. Right. And so then you have the CDC endorsing activity that's bad for people's health because the trans narrative is more important. Final thoughts. If we had to, if we somehow ended up in a war with Russia, as we may very yep. well end up, do you think our military is ready for that? No, and I wouldn't support it. Yeah. Like I, I, I wouldn't, I would be actively protesting in the streets. I, I think it would be one of the most disastrous things our country could do. I, Russia's not our enemy. Yeah. Russia should be a friend of the United States. I don't understand. No one can tell me why they're our enemy. We should go to war against the cartels. <laughs> Sign me up for that. All right, maybe out in this or out with the army, fighting the cartels. I have a bad back, but like <laughs> I would help finance it or help doing what I can. Like the cartels are killing hundreds of thousands of Americans. Yeah. Russia doesn't kill Americans. Russia is a fake enemy created by the American security state. I'm not saying they're a good country, but turning Russia into an enemy has been one of the dumbest things that our media and think tanks have done. Well, Charlie, thank you thank so you. much. We so appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you.